verse 1 continues, from the fish's belly. Mimea hadaga, from inward parts the fish. As I said, the prayer comes from the belly of the fish. He understood that the fish was, in fact, his deliverer. This is the second and last time that the me'e, or inward parts, are mentioned in Jonah. And it is also the last time that they are mentioned in the Bible. The word, in fact, means inward parts, but it has two other uses as well. It is used as a metaphor for the heart, spirit, and emotions of a person, or even God. And thirdly, it is used to speak of the reproductive organs of either a male or a female. In Ruth chapter 1, it is used when speaking of the womb of Naomi. This is the only time that it is used of a creature. And so the use of the word is not without significance. The fish is the deliverer and thus is a symbol of Christ. There is Jesus the man and there is the Christ of God. And so each aspect of this word is seen. There are the literal inward parts. There is the emotion of what has occurred in the Lord through the work of Christ. And there is the new life which issues from the work of the deliverer there in the womb of life. And this is not a stretch. Jonah, typical of Jesus, will acknowledge that he was in the pit, meaning death, just as Jesus was. And so all of what is occurring to Jonah is given to us to understand the greater work of Christ. As he also is a picture of the Jewish people, the same three concepts can also be applied to them. The emotions of their plight, the new birth that they receive in Christ, all of it is tied up in what happens to Jonah. One word, carefully placed into the account is given to show us so very much of what is going on in redemptive history. Now, as a curiosity for you, the word fish in verse 117, that was our last verse of the uh, last chapter that we had last week, was dag, a male fish. Here in verse 2-1, it is daga, a female fish. The speculation on the reason for this is almost endless. Some is so fanciful that it's absurd. One guy named Ishakis said, here's what he said, listen carefully. Jonah was first swallowed by a male fish and that because he did not pray in it, he vomited up and swallowed by a female one in which his situation was more confined and that from this circumstance, he was driven to prayer. Well, we know that's not right because a male fish is what spits him up on the shore. So we've got male, female, male. So that guy's wrong and it's stupid anyway. And it may be stupid, but other people count this up to just scribal error, which is just as stupid. I mean, you got one verse and he says a male fish, and then the next verse he says a female fish. If that's not ridiculous, I don't know what is. The Lord put this in here for a reason, just as he did with the gender discords elsewhere in the Bible. The book of Ruth has several that we went through. Nobody had ever commented on them except incorrectly, and we went through it, and now you know why if you watch those Naomi or those Ruth sermons. Therefore, there must be something which is being relayed to us about what has happened to Jonah. In the Bible, wisdom is personified as a female. Instruction, or Torah, is feminine as well. Therefore, the belly of the fish is being personified as a place of wisdom and instruction. And this is so. Jonah is said to have prayed out of the fish's belly after his death in the sea. The fish is now equated to the place where knowledge is being conveyed concerning the process of redemption. This seems logical because the next time that the word fish is used, as I said, it will again be in the masculine. The fish that swallowed him is the same fish that will vomit him out, a male fish. But the belly of the fish here is being equated with knowledge concerning God's redemptive workings. 